you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, for bringing us all here in your presence. So, Father God, I pray, even as we worship you and hear your word, Lord Jesus, that your presence uh, would fill the place that we are in, Lord, would fill our homes, oh, Father God, that you would touch our hearts, oh, Father, that every uh, word of worship, oh, Father God, would touch your heart, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, uh, that we would enter your presence, Lord, that we would have encounters with you, Father God, that uh, even as we learn your word today, dear Father God, that uh, it would be good seed, uh, seed in good soil, oh Father God, that you would retain your word, oh Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, John will lead us in a time of worship. Uh, over to you, JP. All right. <clears throat> uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, let's look to the Lord this morning, this evening, sorry. Let's close our eyes before His presence. He's a God who comforts us. He's a God who is with us. His name is Jehovah Shammah. God is with us. In our good times, in our bad times, even when we feel low, He is with us. And He's a God who listens to us when we call. When we call, He answers. That's the confidence that we have. as we come to his presence this morning, this evening let's look to his face and say God we come to you we call on your name we call on your name Jesus falling on my knees and worship giving all I am to seek your Lord, all I am is yours. My whole life I place in your hands. God of mercy, humble not bow down in your presence. At your throne, falling on my knees, falling on my knees in worship, giving all I am to seek your face, Lord.
Let's sing it again. Falling on my knees in worship, giving all I am to seek your faith. Lord, all I am is yours. My whole promises, giving her strength and she called that place Berlehi Roi meaning I've seen the Lord who sees me tonight I just want to encourage all of us there is a God who sees all of us in the time of our distress, in our time of anxiety and not knowing what to do next just seeing just hopelessness and in front of us during those moments we have a God who sees us mm -hmm. can we sing that chorus once again and I call you answer And you came to my rescue and I, I just want to be where you are. I call, I call.
my call, you answer, and you came to my rescue and I, I just wanna be I call, you answer, and you came to my rescue, and I, I just wanna be there, you Let your presence overtake my heart And I wanna know you Let your spirit overwhelm me Let your presence overtake my heart Yeah, I wanna know you Let your spirit overwhelm me Let your presence overtake
winds overtake my heart And I want to know you Let your spirit overwhelm me Let your presence overtake my heart Dear God, we ask you to fill our hearts with your presence. Fill our hearts with your love, God, we need you. More than the air we breathe, more than the song we sing, more than the next heartbeat, God, we need you. Satisfy our souls with your presence right now, God. Let your presence satisfy our souls, Jesus. Let your presence overtake my heart. This is our prayer. This is our cry tonight. God, we need you. Fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our souls with your presence, Jesus. Let your presence overtake our hearts. Lord, we pray for all the 24 people who have joined us. We pray, oh God, that you satisfy us with your presence. Right now, God, you are the God who meets us in the time of our mourning. In the time of our weeping, you are the God who meets with us. I just want to release a word of encouragement to all of us. He's the God who listens. He's the God who listens to our cry. When we call, he answers. And that's the confidence that we have in him. That whatever we ask of his name, he answers. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, just in that moment, as we continue to be in that moment of uh, worship and adoration, I really feel that, uh, you know, that Jesus wants you to know that, uh, I don't know who this is specifically for, but Jesus wants you to know that he is pleased with you. And so is the Father. His cross is his ultimate I love you for you. If you've been asking this question again and again, saying, do you love me, God? Do you love me? Are you there? Do you love me? Uh, it says that he's pleased with you and his cross for you is his ultimate I love you. And I also feel that there's been this uh, sense of um, that, that the missing the mark of the identity and he wants you to know that he calls you his son, his daughter, and he is your father. And uh, the verse that came to my mind is Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. It says, I will declare the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today, I am your father. You are my son, and today I am your father. I am your father, says the Lord. So you don't have to have that spirit of orphan. You don't have to walk and live life with an identity, thinking that you're an orphan or... But God wants you to know that he is pleased with you and he is your father. You are his son. You are his daughter. And he loves you. And another verse that I was reminded of was from Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 9, I think. I'm not going to turn. Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 9 says, um, You have ravished his heart with just one glance of your eyes. You have ravished his heart with just one glance of your eye. He is in love with you more than you can ever imagine, guys. He is in love with you. He is in love with us more than we can ever imagine, comprehend, or understand. 
Amen. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for that word. We, we, we receive it, Lord. We receive it. Help us to walk in the authority and in the identity, knowing that we are loved by you, Father. We are your son. We are your daughters, God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the word that John released. You are the God who sees, God. You always respond. You, you are the God of hope, who brings hope and light into darkness, into hopeless situations, Father. You always respond to the cry of desperation, God. You are the God who sees. We thank you for that. Amen, amen, amen. Come and move among us as we, as we continue to learn from your word, study your word. Holy Spirit, I can share, but only you can reveal. So come and move among us. Breathe your breath over us. We are gathered together in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Thanks, JP. Thank you for leading us in the beautiful time of worship, as always. Um, <clears throat> hey guys, uh, good to see you all once again. Thank you all for taking the time to join in. It's uh, always wonderful to see you guys. Um, right, so we've been doing, we started off this year with the series uh, on the word of God. Okay, uh, last week we had to cancel it because uh, I was not well. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we've been doing the series on the word of God, right? We, uh, we started off with... Uh, you know, understanding why the word, why is it important, right? Um, then we saw, we, you know, about its indestructibility, how so many people in the past uh, have tried to destroy the word of God, but it's endured, okay? Uh, God has uh, kept it, kept the word, of, uh, uh, you know, the Bible uh, for us. Um, and so today, I just want to take a little bit of, uh, of a practical approach, uh, if I may uh, say that, okay, how to, uh, you know, the topic is studying the word, okay, studying the word, all right, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, yeah, wait, see, uh, before I really just actually go ahead and share the screen, right, so, um, you know, this thing, okay, so this is something my friends made me for my birthday in 2009, okay, <laughs> it's like some uh, what is this uh, album or something okay and uh, so and they've uh, written stuff about me okay positives and negatives they've written uh, so um, yeah, yeah. So, um, all right okay Yeah, I mean, so uh, they, I mean, but they've written a bunch of things. So uh, every time I read it, okay, it's like, oh, okay, hey, nice. Okay, this person thinks this about me. It's like, oh, so cool. You know, um, one guy has written, I really don't know what I love about you. It could be the way you keep time of being organized and you being your funny self, something like that, okay. Uh, but we've also done this exercise, if you remember, in uh, some of the worship team guys might know. Uh, we've done this, you know, we, in the worship team retreat, we write, wrote some notes for each other and and whatnot um so it's been about oh at least 11 years since i've had this sometimes you know i every time i read it it just fond memories nice memories right um so where i'm getting at is that's how we read our bible sometimes <laughs> okay we go to okay jeremiah 29 11 the lord has plans for me is like okay thank you lord next let me see you next year again okay uh or psalm 23 okay he's uh, you know the lord is my shepherd he will give everything i need okay amen praise the lord okay close the book and uh, one month later okay just come back okay what is any other some scripture that we like or whatever okay ah uh, um and that's how it's been. I mean, as in, you know, even at least for me, right, reading the Bible was, um, 
a chance for me to go and play cricket. I've, I've shared this with you guys, right? Okay, summer holidays during school and all. If I have to go and play, mom, she'll ask, okay, did you read the Bible? Okay, go read Psalm 23. I'll go, open the Bible, read Psalm 23. They say, okay, amen, close it and escape. Okay, run to the field. Just, okay, so that's what, that was reading the Bible for me. This is just some, uh, what, what what do I call it? Uh, I don't know what, what ritual. I don't know. Okay, it's it's something. Okay, uh, but but over the years, uh, you know, thankfully, um, so grateful to Holy Spirit. Okay, for to Him to helping me fall in love with His Word. Only God can help you fall in love with God's Word. Okay, and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, and I now just so beautiful um, I, I love it okay um, so yeah let me just go ahead and share the screen and we'll dive into the, today's topic right away because there's uh, quite a bit I think don't get scared okay so uh, hey uh, help me. Just, so speak with me okay uh, as we go through this so in the chat sections if you will um, let me know why is it important to study the Bible first okay yeah tell me why is it important to study the bible and then we'll go to the next question you can see the next question you can actually see my entire notes <laughs> yeah you can put it in the chat section or we what we are just 25 people so you can feel free to unmute and uh, speak as well Okay, Joshua says to know God, to go grow closer to God. Okay, understand God's heart. Pratik says to renew our minds. Okay, it's interesting understanding God's heart. Okay, it helps us with our daily life. Yes, thank you. To gain wisdom for living by trusting God. Okay, He speaks through His Word. Right, God speaks through His Word. Okay. Same wavelength, Dirmal and Sharing. Okay, so uh, right now that we've established, uh, you know, somewhat that it is important to study the Bible. Okay, but the next question really is what I want to know is uh, what do you understand by studying the Bible? Like, what does it mean? Uh, does it mean just reading the Bible, like how the example that I gave of Psalm 23, like how I used to read? Uh, you know, what do you study about the Bible? Yeah. What do you study about the Bible? What does it mean to you? See, if, it, if I say you are studying for your exams, the next question will be uh, which exam? Uh, you know, what is that GMAT? Huh? So she, okay. <laughs> Some exam, okay. Uh, so it is, there's kind of an understanding there, okay. So you're studying this subject for that exam. But when, when I say studying the Bible, what does it mean? Okay, background. Right. Come on, guys. Holy Spirit teaches us why we read the Bible. We aren't studying. God is teaching us. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Yep. A way of life, how to seek God's help. Okay. Right. So anybody learning and knowing God and his promises learning and knowing God and his promises okay okay I get this feeling that you guys are thinking which is good but also let me know <laughs> speak to me analyzing and meditating okay analyzing 
Come on, keep it coming, keep it coming. Keeps us focused on the kingdom of God, okay? Jasmine, Alicia, Alice. Nevin, Monica, I see you. Raksha, to understand the word so I can apply in my life situation. To learn God's ways and his thoughts and his will. Right? What does it mean to us? What does it mean to us? Yes. To know how to live a Christian life following his ways. Awesome. Great. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Um, Dr. Nirmal says, understanding and assimilating and finding applications in life. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> his very nature and to live a life pleasing him and loving his people. His very nature and to live a life pleasing him and loving his people. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for sharing. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just keep uh, going. Um, yeah, one of the things uh, I think one of you guys, uh, Joshua said, is Holy Spirit teaches us while we read the Bible, right? Um, so, uh, Studying is, is a huge aspect. Studying the word of God, making time to study the word of God is a, is a, is a huge aspect of, in our journey and in our, in our, as a Christian, uh, in our Christian walk. Uh, so let's take, for example, a classroom, right? Uh, we've all been taught by a teacher. Now, if the classroom was empty, whom will the teacher teach? Right? Joshua just said, okay, the Holy Spirit teaches us. And one of the titles for Holy Spirit is that he is our teacher, right? Um, if we don't show up or make time to just attend his class, he is not going to teach, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, just making time to study the word is important. And a huge, a very huge reason to study, okay, I'm not... Pay attention, I'm not just saying reading the Bible or just glancing through it you know um going through it but i'm just taking intentional studying the bible is uh, one huge reason for you to do that is context okay understanding the context of uh, of the word of god okay so context is the way god gave us the bible one book at a time okay uh, so i just want to share three important points uh, as to uh, three simple points as to uh, you know why understanding the context is important is one the nature of scripture requires context okay the nature of scripture just requires context okay um, what do i mean by that the bible is a composition of various documents, uh, so many, I mean, it's, this whole book is put together by 40 different authors or so, okay, written over thousands and thousands of years, uh, different cultures, different country, different background, whatnot, okay. Uh, see, if I'm sure you've heard your grandparents or someone say, it's like, you know, back in our time, it was like this, we did not have phones this small and stuff like that, okay. That was just 30, 40 years ago. Imagine life thousands and thousands of years ago, okay? Um, so the nature of scriptures requires context, okay? That's point one. And the second thing is context is important for proper interpretation, okay? Um, this is where most of us, uh, if not, yeah, most of us, okay, uh, get things a little off, if not accurately. Okay, so uh, it's just a story about a guy uh, who was just randomly reading the Bible, like how I used to do it. Okay, so, so there's a story uh, told about a man who used random reading method. Okay, let's just close your eyes and open the Bible and see which verse opens up in front of you and read it and then go. Okay, have you done that? I've done that. Okay, so in the story, the first verse he happened to turn to was Matthew 27, verse 5, which says, and throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he, Judas, departed, and he went and hanged himself. <sighs> now, since he was not sure how this verse applied to himself, he flipped to another passage 
and the Bible fell upon to Luke chapter 10, verse 37. And then said Jesus to him, you go and do likewise. The man was quite upset and he did not know how he could ever obey that. So he decided to turn to the one more place. Again, he opened the Bible at random and to his horror, his finger fell upon John 13, 27. It says, then Jesus said to him, whatever you are going to do, do quickly. Uh, <laughs> talk about out of context and interpreting, you know, uh, scriptures differently. This it's, can be very dangerous, right? See, guys, it's very important for us to understand that, again, like I said, you know, the Bible, all of this was written so many years ago, thousands of years ago, right? Uh, it had their own culture. Jesus was a Jew the first century. That means he lived and followed some of the Jewish traditions, right? Uh, he lived the lifestyle of a first century person who was alive back in the day. He used idioms, uh, you know, um, Satan's idioms, uh, just like what we say nowadays, you know, it's raining cats and dogs, okay, straight out of the horse's mouth, right? These are, those are called an example of uh, idioms that we use in English sometimes, right? Uh, but imagine using those lines, okay? Go to a rainforest and some a, a tribe living in the rainforest, Amazon rainforest, or whatever, okay? And you go tell them, it's like, oh man, it's raining cats and dogs. Uh, maybe they understand, maybe they don't. Okay, it's like, what is he talking about? Why is it raining, cat? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's just a rain, okay? Um, and have you thought about uh, Jesus saying statements like, uh, you know, it would have been better for Judas not to be born at all? You know, things like that. And if it makes you wonder and ponder, uh, it's a good point to start and study, to understand, it's like, okay, hey, what did he mean? Some of them just take, it's like, oh, Jesus is so mean. How can he make a statement like that? You know, uh, he's supposed to be God, savior. He came to save us. Yeah, whatnot. But it's very important, important for us to study the word, to understand the context so we can interpret the word correctly. Okay. Um, and so, like I was just saying, similarly, we have taken the sayings of Jesus and used them simplistically in developing our doctrines and theology. Uh, is, this is huge, okay, uh, to our convenience and whatnot. Um, and also, if I may, just to add one more thing is how we, uh, uh, at least some of the young people, uh, misinterpret and take, the, take a verse out of context. Uh, see, maybe it's true, maybe it works all the time, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, this verse you open okay, and then you say it's like okay you know that this verse means that guy is for me this verse means that girl is for me so you know etc and uh, yeah whatnot. okay finally the third thing uh, studying the scriptures uh, in its context helps us rightly handle the word of God Okay, uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Okay, uh, we need to learn to correctly handle the word of truth. Okay, um, so, and if we read the Bible out of context, we are reading ourselves into the text, okay, or giving meaning that simply we are just manipulating for it to fix, you know, to fit our needs, our convenience. Yeah, um, I'm guilty of that, okay. I'm not telling anyone if you are, but I've done that, okay. Um, you, you know, you, you take it out of context and you, you just make the text uh, for you and, uh, you know, and didn't, the whole meaning changes and whatnot, okay. Um, so yeah, those are the three important points, uh, simple points, right? Uh, why we need to study the word in its context, okay? Uh, one is the nature of scripture requires context. Two, context is important for proper interpretation. And three, you need to study uh, the scripture in its context to rightly handle the word of God, okay? And that could mean so many other things. All right. Um, and Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16 and 17 says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. OK, so notice that the first half of the scripture is 
I mean, there's so much loaded in this. It says, all scripture is God breathed. Okay. The second half says, it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Okay. Now, see, I've, I've been a Christian all my life. That doesn't mean I, I as in, how do I say? Uh, I was born in a Christian family. Okay. But that is, uh, but, um, it's like that saying, you know, if you're born in a bakery, you're not a bun. Okay. You don't become a bun. It's like that. So, but in my Christian journey, my long Christian journey, I've seen a people of God, men of God, pastors, evangelists, teachers are using the word of God um, to rebuke, uh, to correct uh, wrongly. Okay. Did I hear an amen to that? Okay. Never mind. But 2 Timothy 2.15 sees that, okay, now does that say that you handle the word of God correctly? Now, if I am your, if I'm your pastor and if I'm your teacher, if I'm sharing something completely out of context in wrong teaching, I am not handling the word of God correctly. I am misusing it, using it to... Uh, rebuke people wrongly or whatever right uh, but that's the thing it's very important for us to understand the word of god just spend time to study it in its context okay i hope you guys are with me today is not a very fun subject i know uh, it's not a very ut subject but it's a very important subject for young people uh, you know you can be a youth leader you can be a worship leader part of the worship team ministry team whatever you can say you love Jesus. You can sing songs about how much you love Jesus uh, and on and on and on. But if you do not make time to study the word, if you don't make time to study the word, uh, you might as well just leave everything and live a very normal worldly life. Okay. So uh, it's very important, young people. Okay. So trust me. So now let's... Uh, now I want to just talk about a few practical things about different types of Bible studies. Okay, so, so till here, I just spoke about how important it is to study the word of God in its context, because, you know, every text has a context, right? Um, so a few simple way, uh, practical methods of, uh, you know, studying the word of God. One, what I do is something called verse mapping. Now, at the end, I will show you an example of the a verse that I've been mapping recently, okay? Verse mapping, okay? Uh, Bible verse mapping is a way to study a particular verse or passage by picking it apart, okay? Analyzing the different words and themes and history behind the verse, okay? Uh, by the way, guys, I'll be sharing this whole document to you, so don't worry about it, okay? Um, the next thing, what, how you can study the word is do a word study, okay? Uh, for example, just take a word, uh, say love, for example. Just do a word study on the word love, okay? In the Hebrew, what does it say? In the Greek, what does it mean, okay? In English, there's just one word for love, which is love. But some of the Bible, huge part of the New Testament was written ancient Greek, not just Greek. Okay, ancient Greek. So back in ancient Greek, there was four words that was used to define love. In the modern Greek, there are six words to define love. So you spend time, you study the word, you do a word study. Okay. The third thing what you can do is you can do a character study or you can do a place study. Okay, character study is let's say you study, you do a study on David. Okay, hey, uh, you know, What's his lineage? Where was he born? Things like that. Everything is available on Google, guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, a place study. You can study about Jerusalem. You can study about Israel, right? Uh, like, for example, if, when you read the Gospels, it keeps telling that Jesus was traveling Galilee, okay, back to Judea. So open up a map and see where is Galilee and how far is Bethlehem from Galilee? Where is Nazareth and all of that, okay? You're doing a place study. All of this helps you understand, uh, you know, the Bible better. Um, topical study is this, similar to, um, you know, the word study, like I said, but you can do a topical study on faith, uh, et cetera. 
and uh, you can do an entire book study, okay, say Jonah or uh, Lamentations, the book that nobody hardly goes to, or, or the minor prophets like Micah, Obadiah, uh, you know, do a book study, okay, uh, walking verse by verse through the book in order to understand what the author is saying, okay. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, is there's this five into five into five Bible reading plan by Navigators. There's a free PDF available, uh, you know, online uh, on Google. Um, yeah, Josh, I'll, I'll share that uh, in a bit. Okay. Um, so, and then, uh, hey, I hope you guys are with me. Okay, so just to take you through, so the different types of Bible studies that you can do is verse mapping, word study, character study, topical study, okay, book study. Um, sometime last year, we did a character study on this person called Obed Edom. Uh, some of the youth uh, might remember that, okay? So a study like that, where is he from and all of that, yada, yada, yada. The other method, that you can do use to study the word is something called the SOAP method, okay? Um, I don't use this method very often, because, uh, but you, you can start off with this method, okay? So what it stands for? It stands for scripture, observation, application, and prayer, okay? This, um, so you pick a scripture. I'm given an example, okay? Scripture, Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, okay? Uh, what does it say? It talks about being the salt and the light. Okay, so you pick a scripture and then you observe, for example, uh, I mean, what is it standing out for you? Okay, so salt is meant to give flavor to something and it also preserves. If it loses the salt quality, salty quality, then it is useless. That's an observation. Okay, so you've taken a scripture, you observe what it is, and then you ask yourself application. What does this mean for my life? How do I live this out? Okay, so you have the scripture, observation, application, and then you finally pray about it. Okay, you, whatever you've written, just write it out and you pray about it. Okay, so that is another way to study the word. Okay, it's called the SOAP method, very simple. Uh, but uh, let's make it more complicated, shall we? Can we make it more complicated? Still, <laughs> please speak to me. Okay. <laughs> okay cool cool so there's uh there's a cheat sheet okay and uh this is more elaborate okay on how to study the bible it's, it's more detailed it's uh, so you throw the soap method out and you come here uh, but if you're in a hurry you can use the soap method but okay so again it's, it's very it's the same similar but uh i'll just break it down in detail so steps is one is you pray you observe you interpret and you apply okay first you pray okay you ask god to guide you to teach you the truth you're asking you praying to the holy spirit to give you the understanding of the scripture uh like again you know like josh mentioned mentioned uh, let you be uh, ask God to be for you to be sensitive to the teaching of the Holy Spirit to the leading in his voice okay so you pray about all that and then observation okay now this is a long process okay as in terms of studying so in observation one a you gather background information okay uh, I will get to that in just a second you define the words that you read, you get the context, you find cross references, uh, questions, thoughts, truths, etc. Okay, so steps of observation, what is it? First, when you're gathering information, the questions that you can ask, who is the author? Who are the recipients? Okay, uh, who is the author writing to? Uh, you know, Paul, for example, book of Galatians, author is Paul, he's writing to the people of Galatia, right? Uh, Romans, Paul, he's writing to the people in Rome. Uh, what is the literary style? Okay. Uh, when was it written? 
uh, and then you define the words. You know, you can choose if you want to define all the words uh, in the in a verse. You words that stand out to you, words you don't understand, meaning of names, places, that, etc. Okay, and you try to get the context. Okay, big one. Who is speaking again? Who is the recipient? Who is this about? Figures of speech. When is this happening? What is the subject? Where are they? Okay. Um, all of that you're getting so remember guys we are still in observation okay we are gathering information all right and finally you come to finding cross references use google we can use a actually this is an app um this is a blue letter bible app uh, i'm sure it's available for android if it's available for ios i'm sure it's there for android okay uh, now this is huge what i use is eSword software uh, it's free free for windows Mac users, you have to pay. Uh, okay, so this is how you find cross references. You can use different applications. Okay, um, and yeah, you, and then finally you come to three is you inter you interpret. It's similar thing as to uh, you know how do you apply it to yourself? Okay, you, like what we saw in the SOAP method application is your interpretation. Okay. Um, and then you, I, so I'm going to share this sheet with you. I know it's a lot of details, uh, but you can go through it. And this is super helpful. Okay. Um, and, I, and I said at the end, I will show you an example of the verse mapping that I've been doing. Okay. So this, and I've used, uh, you know, this thing, this cheat sheet. Okay. Um, and one of the verse that God's been leading me to read, uh, just meditate upon is Proverbs chapter three, verse five. Just that one verse, actually five and six, but uh, for our sake, I just took one verse. Um, so trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So what, uh, you know, you remember verse mapping, right? One of the ways that you can study the word is verse mapping. So uh, observation, Ask, start asking questions. Who is the author? King Solomon, son of David, make a note of it. Okay, who are the recipients? Simple people, common people, and the youth. It's mentioned in Proverbs 1 and 4. You can go back and read. Uh, and to those going into the adulthood or anyone seeking wisdom, basically. What is the literary style? Sorry. Okay, what is the literary style? It's Hebrew poetry. When was it written? Late 350 BC and so on. Okay, so you've gathered this information. Uh, and then now you start defining the words that, for me, I wanted to define words that stand out, that stood out in that verse, okay? So the first one, uh, for all these things, I, I used Merriam-Webster dictionary on Google base. Okay, Merriam-Webster, simple. So what does trust mean? It means uh, assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth for someone or something. Okay, assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. Then you have Lord. And if it's all in caps, actually, sorry, my bad. Yeah, I just gave it colors. Uh, okay. So the Lord, uh, the if it's all in caps in its original Hebrew text, it means Y-H-W-H, -H, okay? It's from the word where we get Yahweh. Uh, some of the scribes uh, of the old chose not to add any vowels to the name. They thought, okay, vowels could change the sound or could mean something else, so they were hesitant about it. So some of the scribes would not add the vowels. And from which we get the name Yahweh or Jehovah, uh, which actually means to be. Then he says, I am. Okay, so that's, that is who he is. Okay, Lord, I, I am. And then another word that stood out is heart. Uh, it says personality, intellect, the emotional or moral nature as distinguished from the intellectual nature. Heart, when Bible says, you know, uh, with all your heart, it just simply means you, okay, your mind, your will, your emotions, etc. And then you have lean, not on your own, okay? Lean is, means to incline, to incline, to deviate, or to cast one's weight uh, to, to one side for support, or to rely for support, or inspiration, to incline an opinion. And finally, understanding. It means a mental grasp, comprehension, the power of comprehending, 
the act or action of grasping with intellect. Okay, I hope you guys are still alive. Uh, <laughs> um, so all of that, how, what am I interpreting? All of that, for what is my takeaway from that? Okay, it simply means to rely on who God is and his promises, his strength, his character, his ability, and not to incline or rely for support on my own intellect and comprehension. Okay, an application in conclusion. So you use that, you see that, and you ask yourself, what is God saying to me right now? What is God saying to me right now? Okay, so this is just an example of verse mapping. Okay, and that's actually the end of my notes. Um, welcome back. Uh, all of that is spelt with just one word. Studying the word equals time. You have to take time to study the word. Um, and that is one of the huge ways of you telling that you love him. More than just the songs that you sing, it's very easy to tell God that you love him in a song. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. It's all easy. But I think where most of the Christians or even young people uh, don't understand is the importance of spending time, making time to study, not just read. Yes, we, you know, I'm not, it, it's absolutely fine to just read the Bible for encouragement. It's absolutely fine to, you know, to search the Bible for hope, for your situation, for your life, for promises of God. It's absolutely fine, okay? Please don't get me wrong. I'm not negating any of it. But my, my question is, should we just stop there? You know, why should only pastors or theologians spend time studying? We only, pastors are not there to just answer the questions of the congregation and whatnot, okay? We're not just here to spoon feed. Uh, this is what it is. Um, we more than happy to do all that, but, but it is also your responsibility as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, for you to be a student of the word. And for to be a student of the word, that means you have to study the word, okay? In everything like what we discussed. Yeah. So that's it, guys. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well behind the camera. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I really hope you can take away something off from today's session, something uh, practical, and you'll start applying it in your life. And I, let me tell you, and I guarantee you that you are not going to be disappointed when you study the word of God. The word comes to life. Um, amen. Amen. Um, so let's just pray and we'll close the session. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift and the privilege, uh, the availability of your word for us, Jesus, in this time. We thank you, Lord, that we can look to your word for promises, for hope, for deliverance, Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I pray that we would rely on your ability, your strength and your character, and your, your love and your wisdom to study the word of God, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would reveal beautiful things of the word for us, I pray. Help us to fall in love with the word, Holy Spirit. Let it not be boring. Let us not think that it's boring. Or it's, it's something that is not entertaining or not. Father, let studying the word or reading the word be exciting to us, Holy Spirit. I pray. Only you can help us fall in love with the word. So right now I pray for each and every single person listening to my voice. I pray that you would birth in us a hunger and a love for your word like never before, Lord. Like never before, Father. I thank you and I bless your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen. I wanted to share more about uh, how to choose a Bible, you know, like which version translation, you know, works best for you. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably share some YouTube links on that uh, because we're running out of time. So more on that later. And feel free to message and ask me, okay, uh, questions. So I'm more than happy to respond to questions regarding the word and, and all of those things. All right. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining. Okay, take care. God bless you all. Good night now. Bye bye. See you, Pratik. See you, everybody. See you, Monica, Junior. Thank you once again for joining. It's lovely having you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. Thank, you. Thank you, Pastor. See you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Take it, guys. John, thank you so much once again. Okay, so she'll thanks that. Alice, Abigail, Alicia. Okay, you guys take care. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.